Preparing, placing and removing the dental dam. Review your tray setup making sure you have the equipment and supplies required. Use the mouth mirror and the explorer to examine the site where the dam is to be placed. It should be free of plaque and debris. Floss all contacts involved in placement of the dental dam. After using a template or stamp, mark on the dam the teeth to be isolated. Correctly punch the marked dam according to the teeth to be isolated. Be sure to use the correct size of punch hole for the specific tooth. To ease placement of the dam with tight contacts, lightly lubricate the holes under surface of the dam with a water-soluble lubricant. Select the correct size of clamp. Secure the clamp by tying a ligature of dental tape on the bow of the clamp. Place the beaks of the rubber dam forceps into the holes of the clamp. Position the lingual jaws of the clamp first, then the facial jaws. Following placement, check to see if the clamp is stabilized on the tooth and check for fit. Use cotton pliers to retrieve the ligature so that it is exposed and easy to grasp if necessary. Transfer the dental dam to the site and stretch the punched hole for the anchor tooth over the clamp. Position the frame over the dam and slightly pull the dam, allowing it to hook onto the projections of the frame to ensure a smooth and stable fit. This will stabilize the dam and aid in locating the remaining punch holes for the teeth to be isolated. Using your index fingers, stretch the dam on the lingual and facial surfaces of the teeth so that the dam slides through each contact area. With a piece of dental tape or waxed floss, floss through the contacts, pushing the dam below the proximal contact of each tooth that is to be isolated. When removing floss, slide it through the contact facially rather than popping it back out. This will keep the dam in place. A ligature is placed to stabilize the dam at the opposite end of the anchor tooth. Invert or reverse the dam by gently stretching it near the cervix of the tooth. A black spoon, FP1, or beaver tail burnisher can be used to invert the edges of the dam. Inverting the dam creates a seal to prevent the leakage of saliva. Apply air from the air water syringe to the tooth that is being inverted to help in turning the dam material under. When all punched holes are properly inverted, the dental dam application is complete. When removing the dental dam, slide your finger under the dam parallel to the arch and pull outward so you are stretching the holes away from the isolated teeth. Use the crown and bridge scissors to cut from hole to hole, creating one long cut. When all septa are cut, the dam is pulled to free the rubber from the interproximal space. Remove any ligatures at this time. Grasp the dental dam forceps and position the beaks into the holes of the clamp and open the clamp by squeezing the handle. Gently remove the clamp from the tooth. Remove both the dam and the frame at one time, making sure to remove any dam material from the interproximal surfaces. Inspect the dam to ensure that the entire pattern of the torn septa of the dental dam has been removed. If a fragment of the dental dam is missing, use dental floss to check the corresponding interproximal area of the oral cavity.